ideal. Stuff, if you put it in overnight, you can't really get a moisture on it because it sweats. And when it sweats, it's probably going to come out the back there. It sweats, then you can't get a decent moisture on it. Uh, but it was running about 20% yesterday. I don't have the luxury of time on my side here. The reason I say I don't have the luxury of time is because I just don't. Now uh, this corn, this variety of corn, I don't, actually this is looking pretty good compared to the stuff I was picking earlier yesterday or shelling earlier yesterday. Uh, the stuff I was shelling earlier yesterday was, it had like a black smut to it. But I don't like the kernels. The, the, the look of the kernel is really, sketchy they seem quite small uh, but there's plenty of bushels there we're in that 200 200 plus bushel range I'm okay with but uh, just annoying that it that was a weird noise it's just annoying that they're very small okay so it's me and William we're gonna jump in the TR 96 here but we've had some questions about how these things work how does a combine work well it's kind of simple and it's kind of complicated for the most part it's simple though all right so the deck plates and the roll snapper rolls on this combine head are worn out so we'll just get that out of the way first of all but uh what happens with the combine is quite simple obviously you have standing corn they go in rows. These rows just so happen to be 30 inch rows. 30 inch rows, so it's spaced 30 inches. Each one of these snoots are 30 inches apart. And uh, you have gathering chains, deck plates, stalk rollers. That's the auger, and then there is the feeder house. All right, so all this stuff comes together. As the corn comes in, it gets aligned here where the where the uh, stalk rollers pull the stalk downward snapping supposedly snapping the ear off with these things being worn as bad as they are they are not doing a very good job but it's okay because we're gonna get there we'll get it done I got BNR welding is supposed to get me new ones and then it goes the gathering chains pull it into the auger the auger brings it across and then the feeder house grabs the the ears and the stalks and everything that's coming into the machine. And from there, yes, from there, it travels along up through to here, <coughs> to this point here. And I think I'm gonna pull the thing apart. So inside of this combine, this particular combine, or anyone for that matter, I'm hoping that I can pull this apart. Uh, what do we got here? I gotta pull that out, right? Uh, and then hopefully, uh, nope, I don't have enough oomph. Now, I won't be able to get it apart for you. Boy, I was going to have a nice video for you, but it's not happening today. And I don't really have time anyway. <laughs> so anyway, what, what happens here... Oh, shoot. My glasses are just being total assholes. Hold on a second here. All right, so what happens is there are two what they call rotors that run from the back of the feeder house all the way to the back of the combine, all the way to the back of the combine. So somewhere right up in here. And then what happens is there's what you call rotor bars or rasp bars that are in the back and they do a rubbing motion on the stalk which and the cob parts and pieces and it takes the corn off of the cob and from there it drops across it comes down and there is a thing called a shoe on a john on a new holland and what that does is it it slowly moves the grain and all the cob material that has fallen through to the back of the combine where it goes over the first set of screens or sieves 
and there is a blast of air that comes up from the shoe between the shoe and the first set of screens and that blows all the lighter material grain is heavy trash is light like leafy material stock material is lighter than actual grain so it blows all that stuff off of there and then it falls down to the clean clean grain screen which is down below this upper one and it falls into the clean grain pan if there's any cobs with that fall through they go into what you call tailing and those tailings go get recycled back up to the front of the rotors all the chaff or the the larger pieces the larger pieces of cob and the stalks they come out the top out of the discharge beater which then shoots up onto this plate which then drops down to the ground and everything else comes off the back of the screen and onto the ground that corn that clean corn is elevated from the clean grain pan to here into this elevator which goes into this auger which goes into the bin the cob in the tailings the the stuff that made it past the screens and that goes into this tailings elevator which goes up here and then into this auger which goes back over top of the rotors my new belt is working perfectly thank you so that's how they work basic and rough um i could get into more detail if i had more time but i got a dryer running uh i'm hoping that this is a quick overview and if not william's in there and uh, we're gonna check the oil and get going so. so obviously you can see how the snapper rolls are not working quite as well as they should uh, that leads to shelling out in the head to a certain degree uh, Which is a bad thing because that's waste you're losing you're losing valuable grain out on the ground uh, This one's not doing that too bad because I have welded up I have welded up the uh, rollers on them to make them work better than what they were I have to drop that a little bit uh, but you can see that not only it's doing a good job I mean I can't complain too much until it starts getting the dampness of the stalk it makes it worse that roller right there in the middle is the biggest problem but you can see behind me how that corn that clean corn is coming up in there and it's doing just fine I mean it's doing just fine I should have enough to fill out this one wagon here yeah more than enough to fill this wagon should have more I should have enough to do this wagon if I don't have enough to fill the wagon then I don't but I can always I can always figure that out later right right no I'm probably not gonna have enough to fill that wagon in this field but that's okay because I got lots more and uh, the boys are gonna be coming back here anyway for uh, to pick up that wagon anyhow which will be great because that'll keep them busy keep me busy and uh, we'll get this day done get this corn off my bin will be full probably tomorrow and then I'm in kind of in a pickle being a little bit of a pickle because I really want to get this corn off of here and with a bin full then I got to figure something else out
busy day. I have Timothy uh, combining. Obviously, you saw that in the first clip there. Well, one of these clips, who the hell knows. Uh, Timothy's combining corn. Cody's running the dryer. I'm running wagons, and now I'm going to get the 8530 out. Teresa's going to go bail. So, yeah, so Teresa's going to go bail. And that'll, that'll keep us going there. So we'll have all kinds of operations going on. We just never slow down around here, I swear. One of these days we'll slow down, but not today. Just not today. I don't know how we end up with that in there. Hopefully this sucker just fires right up and goes. We're just going to have her go right to work. There's nothing else that needs to be done to this baler other than my code going. And hello. All right. I hate it when the bin full indicator doesn't go off. And it does that from time to time. But uh, of course, then you get some cab corn or some spillage here. So I just stopped. I knew I was getting full, but I didn't think I was that full. I actually caught it in the mirror there. <gasps> so anyway, corn's yielding like freaking gangbusters i don't like this variety i'm gonna state that right now uh the corn is good i mean the corn's pretty good it's it's <laughs> it's good it, it did what it's supposed to do but the problem the thing that i don't there's a couple things i don't like about this variety and it's a hundred day um i mean the ears look awesome right i mean they're all pretty uniform if this guy here, I mean, some are higher than others. That's not my issue. You know, so, I mean, you go right down the line and they're just beautiful, right? I'm going to shell the, I'm not shelling, I'm going to husk them back a little bit, you can see. I mean, it just, the problem that I have is that the stalk is weak and it has no standability. I mean, this stuff, you breathe on it and it's going over. Okay, so that's that's one issue that I'm not happy with this variety. I'm not going to plant it again next year. This is the first year I planted this variety. Next year, I think I'm going to stick with the 106. The 106 shells out beautifully, stands better, yields higher. But this is the other issue that I have, is this. It just doesn't shell. I mean, I'm forcing on this. Finally, I get them to come loose. And I have to run my rotor speed pretty high in order to, and it's everywhere. It's all over the place. It just, it doesn't shell worth a shit. Uh, test weight's terrible. Uh, it's like 54 and a half, 55. Uh, there's a lot, because the kernels are smaller, they're lighter. And <coughs> I can't use as much air. I mean, it's just, it doesn't shell out. I have to run my rotor speed a little higher and I have to run my concaves a little bit closed. Uh, sieves are closed down a little more than I want them to be because I have to run everything tighter and faster so that it shells it. And what that's doing is putting bits of cob and bits of stalk in my bin. Not much. I mean, it's clean. I'm not going to complain too god awful much. But uh, with the higher, the higher fan speed, or I have to reduce this fan speed because if I make the fan speed too high, it's blowing the lighter kernels out the back. And I'm, I mean, we're talking three, four, five bushels to the acre off the back. Uh, and I don't like that at all. So it's been a battle, you know, with the... Uh, with the uh, comp trying to get the combine to clean it right and it's working i mean i'm not gonna complain i shouldn't complain too much i've seen a lot of john deere combines out there that have just made horrific you know horrific uh looking bins of corn my problem right here is that i got a little bit too full all i gotta do is move five feet and the damn stuff will settle down but Oh, I'm going to be feeding the damn rabbits here for too long. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah. Well, maybe I should just call it a slow go home. I only got a mile to go. But uh, anyway, 
So that's why I'm not gonna plant this variety again. I mean, if you look at these kernels and look at the combine, it's just full of smut, black, look at me, you know? But see how thin and small that kernel is? And they're not very, they're not very good, I'm not happy. I mean, I could complain. I mean, it is going, it is yielding over 200 bushels to the acre. I mean, that's just a cold hard fact. I mean, I'm looking at 210, two, two to 210, which is great for what I'm seeing here. But I can tell you right now that the uh, 106, 106 day is going to yield every bit of that. And it's heavier test weight. So it's actually yielding higher. But anyway, it's going to take a little bit to get this bugger through there. Okay, so she just finished up. She just finished up. We she had a knotter issue, I guess. I don't know why, but just one string. She said she had to get out twice, and I think there's a twine tension issue. It's no big deal. It's one of those things you get up there and you lubricate your uh, rollers, and life be good. But she worked all afternoon. Finished up. She made 31 bales of third cut. Hey, 31 bales. So it's that's almost a semi load. Uh, was gonna go into little bales, but of course, I think there's something wrong with the focus on this thing, huh? I think there is. 31 bales, uh, 31 times 45, right? 31 times 45. So 45, that's 90, 90, 180. Or, yeah. Yeah, 90, 90, 180 bales. That's all that would have made in little bales. 180 bales. I'd have been okay with that. But uh, we also did, uh, I do have a lot more to do. I got a lot of second cut that needs to be done. This is third. So I'm actually kind of surprised. And them little, they're, they're bricks. They're lead bricks. But anyways, back to the corn dryer. Back to the dryer.